I age, therefore I am. He made up the word Zoomer and rebranded aging. Philosophical media visionary and energetic broadcasting pioneer Moses Neimer lives his life the Zoomer way and encourages boomers with zip to hop on his bus. A few years ago, Moses emerged with some smart aging commandments, a magazine called Zoomer, and zillions of ways to kick a little dust up and live your third act to the hilt. Stay with us for Moses Neimer and his take on what it means for boomers to embrace a new vision of getting a little bit older. Good to be here with you today and with media genius Moses Neimer. He is an idea man and an impatient master of reinvention who is knee deep into making aging cooler and cooler and cooler. In his complex media life, he has created an array of radio and television stations and, of course, launched a digital channel. He presides over Idea City, Canada's premier meeting of bright minds, and he uses his multifaceted mind to steer Zoomer magazine and embrace Zoomerism. That's a pretty good introduction. <laughs> but you left out about two dozen channels. You two said dozen. a digital channel? Two dozen digital channels? Yeah, when I hung up that part of my career, I think I counted 22 channels, yeah. Mm. All in all. Mm -hmm. But now I've started all over again. Where? Uh, well, it's kind of a national enterprise, head offices in Toronto, but we have a very strong presence here in the West Coast. Uh, overall, the, <laughs> the little miniature Zoomer empire comprises of a national magazine, which you have here on mm -hmm. your desk, Zoomer magazine, two national television channels, the most prominent of which is called Vision, widely distributed, available in over 10 million homes. And then there is a digital channel called One, which is about yoga, meditation, healthy living, that kind of channel which helps support a long life. And then there are two local television stations, one of which is resident right here in Surrey. It's you called see. Joy. Well, who knew? Who knew? Now and we know then, everything. And then we have a couple of great radio stations that are licensed to the GTA, but they're distributed by satellite and cable, so they're available nationally. And of course, when you're on the web, you are a world service, the only all-classical music radio station in English Canada. And the demographic you're hitting mm. is whom? The 45 plus is the way we like to frame it, and the reason for that is that the youngest of the baby boomers is today 45, the oldest, is 65. And in this new vision of aging, I discovered very early on that language is part of the problem. Mm. If we're healthy, we all want to live forever, but nobody wants to be old. Old's a world that makes people mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable, and variations of old, like mature, senior, elder, still have a little bit of that squirm factor. So I combined boomer with zip and created the word zoomer. And is it in the dictionary? It will be soon. I've never seen a word so rapidly adopted mm. into the language because it's put its finger on something very real, which is we're not aging the way our parents aged. We're certainly not aging the way our grandparents aged. We've had this miracle of extra longevity We've gained 20, almost 25 years of longevity in the last 60. It used to take millennia to push the human life expectancy mm -hmm. another decade. Mm -hmm. And now because of advances in education, nutrition, vastly improved medicine, and, and just living in peacetime, we're all living longer. Uh, most of us are living better. And the culture has yet to adjust. Well, you have often been described as a media genius, of course, but also a liberal, a red wine drinking, 70-year-old multimillionaire or 70-plus, not sure, <laughs> not asking, but we can ask today Why because... Not? I'm 70. Okay, you're mm. 70. Take me back to when you weren't 70 and you were like 20. Yep. What, CBC, wondering who you were? Uh, I, I, 
I'm trying to remember all of that. <laughs> you don't have to give me I, the exact I didn't, age. Well, no, I didn't spend a lot of time in, in, in anxiety. Um, I did have an early career at the CBC in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And then I went out on my own and, and helped to create City TV and Much Music and a bunch of other channels that people know about, like Space and Bravo and so on and so forth. But there were times, I'm sure, when you had a few challenges along the way because you were thinking out of the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes life interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, your, your observation does get me thinking that I read recently a little bit of, you know, sort of rough social science which described the way in which people live the various decades of their life. And uh, in this discussion about aging, I think it escapes certainly the culture and the advertising community that it's in fact the 30s and 40s that mm -hmm. represent the most difficulty and turmoil in people's lives because they're establishing careers, <coughs> excuse me, they're engaging in the kinds of relationships we'll, which will eventually mm -hmm. lead to complications in their life. They're having families, they're trying to work their way up that treacherous ladder of ambition mm -hmm. and career. Um, uh, finally, when those chickens come home to roost, people are in their 40s, middle, deep 40s, and they are actually identified as the, the, the years of greatest turmoil. It's only when people breach 50 and 60 that they achieve a certain kind of mastery. Whatever it is that's going to happen to you in your life has happened. I mean the negative stuff. And there is a sense that if you're in a career, you're probably at the top of your earning power. You have a sense of yourself. You know where you stand. The kids are out of the house. It's time for you. Uh -huh. So the 50s and 60s turn out to be the happiest, self-reported happiest years in people's lives. Uh, the 50s and the 60s. And and why well, am I on about this is, is that when our culture these days engages in discussion of the question of aging, it's always presented as a problem, when in fact it's a, it's a miracle. It's a miracle, but it's a problem if you don't have work or you've lost work because you are of a certain age. They put the stamp on you, you're 65, you must go. Well, you must no longer go because we at CARP, the advocacy mm -hmm. association that I had have fought very successfully against mandatory retirement. Why on earth should our country, which is busily importing 250,000 people a year because we have these kinds of shortages, be forcibly retiring people with experience and knowledge just at the point that they mm -hmm. have the most to give. I'm not for that, trust right. me. Not at my age. And, but and I think it's equally reprehensible, you know, to force somebody to keep working if they don't want to, mm -hmm. as it is to try and force them of to course. stop working. Well, wasn't it Margaret Mead who said, sooner or later I'm going to die, but I'm not going to retire. Exactly. So you reinvent, you change, you do all of that, if you have the money. Mm -hmm. It's true. Not everybody has contemplated this extra mm -hmm. life, and therefore people do have issues of finance, but that is not actually the typical thing. I think it's appropriate for us to worry about people who don't, but the bulk of Zoomers don't necessarily have financial issues. They have financial apprehension, but mm. they don't really have financial issues as portrayed as endemic in the popular culture. And yet, if you talk to some of the top advertisers that are advertising people in this country, the mad men, now the mad women, mm. they will tell you that they want to attract a younger demographic, mm. a 35 female, 40 female, yeah. 50 female. Reality television is where it's at. They're peddling all the old nostrums that I used to sell when I started City TV and much music. It was appropriate then, not because people were young, but because the generation that had appeared after the Second World War was the largest generation ever created. These are mm -hmm. the boomers that we've mm -hmm. been talking about. The culture discovered them when they were young and therefore concluded that what was important about them was that they were young, and that wasn't it at all. What was important about them was that they were massive in size. They're still massive in size, but it's 30, 
35 years later, and the ad business has got to wake up and smell the coffee. Okay, so youth is overvalued. I'm hearing that. The succeeding uh, that generations way. are much smaller, mm -hmm. and we hear it a lot. The kids are in the basement. They don't have any money. 80% of the national wealth is controlled by Zoomers. 70% of all the voting is done by Zoomers. What does it take for the culture and the ad business and the political mm. system to wake up? I don't know. You're the visionary. What does it take? <laughs> well, it takes the tour, a kind of tour that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking here and there. We're on a drive for membership. We have over 300,000 members already in, in CARP. CARP. But we're on a march to a million, and we are getting our voices heard. In Ottawa, they're waking up to the fact that the kids come and go, but people our age are devoted to the mandate, they understand the importance of it, and they appear at all the elections. Well, Gordon Pinsent, the iconic Gordon Pinsent, actor, 80 plus, 82, I think, who was on the cover of uh, this month's magazine. Can we hold it up? Of course. Yeah. I think we've got it captured. The okay. magic of television, wow. you know? Yes. Uh, but 82, The Rock's favorite son, looks back... Uh, with his new book next. Wonderful interview, wonderful man, still. Full of beans. Full of beans, yeah. uh, bright brain, all of that, and still working. Right. Well, he said to me, Fanny, I always say yes. Mm. Always have, probably always will. It's a lovely attitude, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if your viewers are aware, but many of our ideas about work and retirement, right, were established in the last century, and I don't mean the immediate last century, I mean the last, last century, right in the 1800s. Um, th this idea that people should retire at 65 <laughs> or 70 and get right. a pension, for example, do you mm -hmm. know where that came from? No. Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck, at a time when life expectancy was in the 50s, he proclaimed in his little political tussle with the rise of the socialists right. that if you hit 70, you would get a national pension, right? <laughs> and the few people who did, uh -huh. did get a bit of money and they lasted for another year and then they died. But these ideas have become rigid and they no longer reflect the reality of the fact that mm. we can continue you to work and find satisfaction. Yes, and play the wild card. Uh, uh, Jane Fonda calls it the third act. Yes. Uh, how to make it better, uh, what are the challenges? All of that you cover in Zoomer magazine. Yeah. And how do you get on the cover of Zoomer magazine? What does that take? What does it take? I don't know. It happens in discussion between myself and the editor, uh, Suzanne Boyd. Okay. And but we think in terms of personalities who represent uh, a certain kind of drive, Elan. They have a certain mm -hmm. profile in society. Do they have to be a certain age? Um, well, they've got to be in our demo, which is 45 Okay, plus. because yeah. Sir Richard Branson, of course. Yeah. He's the a queen, pistol. The, the queen. queen. She's in our demo. Of course. John yeah. Irving. John, yeah. And Gordon, as and, we and mentioned. Just and others. Gordon, Jan had, Arden. Was she not great? She was turned she 50. Was she not great? She did that centerfold. She, now, what was the response to that uh, in the head office? Uh, in, well, we loved it. We thought it was uh, very as it were, courageous and mischievous of her to have agreed to do it. Most of our covers are taken by Brian Adams, who's a yes, local he's boy. editor at large. Yeah, and, uh, and it was his idea, sort of. We were shooting Jan for the cover in a more conventional way, and then he had this little thought. He suggested Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne mm -hmm. thought, whoa, maybe. Why I don't not? know, but you ask her. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and Jan just in the moment said, how great. You got and when you do the math in the office, how many issues of the Jan Arden uh, Zoomer Meg did you sell? I know, it was great. It was I bet successful. it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it says it all. I'm here. I'm not going away. I'm but not only proud. that, we discussed it. And, and I'm real. This is what real people And this is what I like. really look like. And you see so many women today. Yeah. Uh, not afraid to take it all off mm. with a few lumps and bumps. It doesn't. We used to say, if it's pitch black, I'll walk around the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. now you say, whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Arden proved it. I mean, 
She's not only a great talent. Yeah, and funny. She's so funny. And guts. Yeah. And guts. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll return with impresario Renaissance man Moses Neimer. He is the president of CARP, Canadian Association of Retired Persons, and the founder of Zoomer Media. <laughs> 